So I've been looking around YouTube and I've noticed there's lots of top tips for this and top tips for that. Well, I want to give you some top tips for hacking as I've just had a hacking camp. But I thought I'd do something a little bit different, quite current, and make it a little bit more memorable. And I've called it PPE. So I thought I love my acronyms. So P, uh, the first P stands for preparation, the second P for planning, and the E is for experience. So if you're gonna go hacking, you need to sort of think about your preparation or your training with your horse. Is your horse good at going left and right? And it doesn't have to be a complicated left or right. I mean, simply direct your horse to the left and they go left, well, that's right, by the way, <laughs> to the right, um, and, and to the left. So that's the first thing you need to have on your horse to go. Also, can you get your horse to go forward? It sounds like the simplest thing, but I come across this so many times of people who have troubles with their horse hacking. Um, they put their leg on, the horse steps forward, or op offers them a step forward, and the rider doesn't reward that by relaxing or stop kicking. So remember that, ask your horse to step forward. When they do, relax and let them realize the step forward is a good thing to do. And that will get you back on the straight and narrow. On the flip side of that, you might have a horse that when, they, when you go out hacking gets super excited. And again, this is where your bend comes in. Using small circles to channel that energy or redirect that energy is a hugely important way if your horse is excited and you have to wait in a certain area. Use small circles and serpentines to manage that energy. Um, some other things that you might want to have on your horse is some groundwork. You might come across something where you think, whoa, this is too much, so I need to get off. Well, there's no point getting off unless you have some groundwork that can bring your horse under control, calm them down, and be able to either go past an object or just settle them so you can get back on and enjoy your ride. So there's lots of little um, tips that we do in your horsemanship to help with all, all these things. Um, and if you do get off, one of the most important things to be able to do is make sure you can get back on. Um, can you pull your horse up to a bank or a log? Um, can you lower your stirrup iron to get back on and do that? Um, and of course, I suppose in terms of preparation, uh, how's your mindset? Uh, so it's just something to think about before you go out. And these are some of the things that flagged up it with my camp. You know, if you go out thinking, well, what if this is going to happen or what if that happens, then you're, you're going to go in with that negative mindset. You've got to be able to answer those questions. And if you have good preparation in your training, you'll be able to say, what if my horse does this? Well, I can do that. And you get a positive outcome. Think about having a, a positive mindset. So when you go out, you're... Um, you've got a plan for those what ifs or you've got a, a strategy to deal with those what ifs. If my horse um, spooks at something, I'll redirect, I'll focus on a point past that object and I'm just gonna ride to it. So having that ability to look and focus where you're going, again, is a really important part of um, being able to ride confidently and get your horse good and you good with hacking. I also had some funny tips from my campers that said, you know, when I go, how I dress. If I dress um, ready to go, then that makes me feel positive. So there could be some things that put you in a good frame of mind, have a positive mindset, and um, to get you out hacking and have a positive experience. So once you've got your preparation with your horse sorted, it's time to plan your hack. And there's lots of things that you can do in terms of planning to make your hack successful. Uh, if you're not very confident by yourself, then go hacking with a partner, but choose your partner wisely. And, and more importantly, the horse that you're hacking with wisely so that they give you confidence and, and don't take away from it. Um, check the weather. Sometimes it's just not your day. I mean, when, <laughs> I'm in England now and with the weather the way it can be, 
yeah, you just look out and go, I'm not sure today's a good day. And horses are a bit like that as well. So if the weather's bad, maybe give them a hacking a miss that day um, until you feel confident and then you can take it on. Um, there's lots of other things that it could be bin day. So maybe not the best day to go hacking. Um, rush hour traffic, school runs. If you're hacking on roads, then it's really important that you... Uh, steer clear of, of those times in the day. Um, something that I'm really, when I'm planning my routes or where I'm going hacking, I like to know where big driveways are and if I'm on the road, of course, or, or um, laybys and things like that so I can get off the road and if I need to manage, redirect some energy or just wait or get off or whatever, I know there's spaces there. I mean, a couple of times I've had a huge lorry coming down the road at me and I'm on a just started horse. Well, I'm not going to try and put my horse past that. I just think to myself, where's the next the lay by that I just went past? I reverse, head back down and um, get it, get in and get me some space so my horse can take it in at a safe distance and without overwhelming them. So knowing your route and where you can have little gaps uh, is also a good idea. Um, and with, with all that, best introducing traffic, and this goes back to your preparation, in a safe environment. Don't go out on a road to train your horse with traffic. Do it in the arena or somewhere safe where you can control the, um, the exposure to, um, to traffic when you're training, as with all um, desensitising. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's planning, know your route and have those few things um, in your locker so you can deal with situations when they come. And lastly, experience. So when you're out hacking or if you want to have a horse that's really good to hack, there's only one way that's gonna happen. And that is if you go and do it. The more hacking you do, and it can start off a little bit sort of hairy sometimes or not as you would like but you've got to keep working at your planning and your preparation so you can push through those rides and put some experience on your horse my dad always had an expression he used to say wet saddle blankets make good horses and he doesn't mean hose those saddle blankets he means ride your horse get the, get a bit of a sweat on and um, you're going to find those horses are the horses that are going to learn to, to manage hacking, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Um, another thing about the experiences, if, you're, if you feel like um, it's all too much, bite-sized chunks, which is what, I've, which are what I'm trying to do with PPE. Break it down into bite-sized chunks so you can manage it and then piece it together to form um, a nice training situation to improve your hacking. Um, and so there we have it, guys, PPE. There's my uh, top tips for successful hacking. Good luck.
When my horse is tense and uptight, I need to relax and allow her to go forward. Yes, simple. <laughs> Tip guys, drop the rope. <laughs> okay, so for me, the best thing about it was the dropping the rope, the long rope. And my horse is obsessed with mares, mares in season, and he'll go off like a bullet and you're on the end and it's a kite. Now, drop the rope in front and he won't step over it. He won't move, so that is brilliant for me. It's been a complete game changer. You can never do enough groundwork and the leading, holding the pole is the key. And I thought I'd been doing it right for years, but if you yell, pivot, do it. <laughs> My top tip is to use the, the one rain stop a little bit before you need it. If you ask your horse to go forward, don't stop until it goes forward, even if it's just one step. Top tip, bend is your friend. Okay, whenever you're ready. My top tip is just remember to breathe. 